Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is Cannabis Hotline. This is a show where we can talk about anything about cannabis that you have questions about. For instance, you want to start growing, or you're growing and have questions. I wrote the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, so we can talk about growing. And that's exactly what this next caller is all about because he wants the max yield possible for his space so listen in as we go over the reality of the growth hello yes sir and so what what can I, what can i do for you today all right so basically i'm planning to build a, a, a completely sealed grow room with the outside dimensions of the room being 10 feet by 18 feet. So the inside dimensions of the room are going to be slightly smaller, uh, factoring in the, the width of the studs and stuff like that. So basically, the, the inside dimensions of the room is going to be um, 82 inches in height and um, 112 inches in width and 18 feet minus 8 inches. You, you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, so so nine by eighteen by seven. That's close enough. Yep, yeah, just about. Yes. And um, I'm in Massachusetts, so they just passed that we can grow twelve plants in our household. So what I'm trying to figure out is the 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 best setup to to maximize yield, and obviously quality goes into other factors, but to maximize the yield for twelve plants in the space that I'm working. With. Like, okay. You know, main, mainly the amount of lighting that I'm going to need. I, I purchased two Solar Revolution light movers. Um, I got four three-by-six trays, and my plan was to put three plants on each tray um, across the room, across the four trays, to equal Which, 12 plants. I'm, I'm going to be getting CO2 tanks, um, drip system, um, air conditioning. Um, what else? Yeah, all that stuff. And so I'm I'm having trouble figuring out the the optimum amount of lighting that I'm gonna need to maximize the yield and profit from this from that setup, those amount of plants. Okay. That's, that's what my size, main question. Okay, what size trays did you say you had? Three by six. Three by six. How many did you buy? Four. Because okay. I want to have room to walk around the outside of the room. So yeah, I, I doubt you'll ever. I doubt you'll ever use them, and I doubt you're going to use CO2 tanks. I'm pretty sure you're never going to buy a drip system, and I doubt you're going to use the Solo Revolution movers. So, let's start with the initial goal of max yield. And for max yield, what we're talking about in your space is is like. Two, you have nine by eighteen, so you can do two four by four tables wide, and four eight twelve sixteen. So four eight twelve sixteen. You could do four five four four by spaces long for a total of eight. I suspect that you're going to end up with six lights in this room, but I got to tell you. I, I don't think I don't think that's the approach because I'm looking at the picture that you're showing me, and in the top corner, I, I see a window up there. Are you going to put an AC up there? No, I'm building a, I'm building a room inside of this room. Yes, I understand that, but I'm looking yeah. at this room at the moment, and you're going to have to put an AC in the room. So the question is, I'm, I'm looking at a perfectly good room to grow in. It's even made better by having a window to put an AC in. So why are you building a room inside this room instead of using this room? Um, to be discreet, to, to the floor is carpeted. I don't want to damage any of the – I rent my home, so I don't okay. want to damage any of the walls, uh, any of the ceiling, the carpet, anything like that. So why don't you just buy, a, like, a tent frame or something? I mean, you can hang the light. I was – I mean, well, a tent's more expensive than building an actual room. Um, no, it, it's probably not going to be more expensive, and it's definitely more convenient in your case. Um, when I when you ask me for the maximum yield, and I'm looking at the picture of the room that you show me, if you're going to have to cover the floor, then to protect the carpet, I, I don't see why you wouldn't just cover the floor. And and I don't know how you're going to cover the floor because if you use the panda paper, that bisqueen, that plastic paper, 
you're going to yeah. just eventually slip and break a hip. And if, if you try to cover the whole floor, um, you're never going to like it. And if you try to build a structure, it never really turns out the way you think. And if, if you're good enough to build a structure, you usually overbuild it. And again, you turn into a builder instead of a grower. Because the room you have, from my perspective, it looks fantastic. I would put a big AC in that window, and I would put six lights in this room. But we have many more problems before you even begin building. Because if you have a, if you have a, and you said 72 inch, how high was your ceiling? You said 72 inch? 82. 82, so seven six, feet. Six feet ten. So you have a seven foot ceiling, so you can't use trays, because if you put a one foot hood off your seven foot ceiling, you now have a six foot. And if a tray is two feet off the ground, you're starting four feet from the plant. And if you add a bucket, you're going to be three feet away before you even turn the light on. So I doubt you're going to use trays. And if you lower the room any by by your structure, you're already out of room. And then when you tell me you have a 12 count plant, a 12 plant count limit, um, you are absolutely not going to be using trays if you want them as big as possible. So let's take a step back and let's ask about veg. Are you going to be vegging in this same space and then flowering? Yes. Okay. And if you're going to do that, you definitely are going to divide this space up with a couple of tents. You're not going to be you're not going to be building anything, and you're definitely not going to be using tables. Because if you don't have a veg, a separate veg, that means you're going to have to veg and flower in the same space. And at the very least, if you were to take 12 plants and veg them for four weeks and then flower them for eight weeks, you would probably need two 600s, maybe a 1,000 on a light mover. So you are very far away in your initial estimate of components and rotation from your your desired statement of a maximum yield. You are very far apart between those two. Because frankly, in this space, what I see is is two four by eights and a five by five veg. Maybe th oh, you could do three four by eights, three four by eight tenths. And you're not really going to be able to, I suspect you're not going to be able to do anything more than three four by eights in the space. And four by eights are cheap. And I don't think you're going to be putting 1,000 watts in them. I think you're going to put two 600s or 1,000 watts on a light mover. I don't think you're going to end up with what you started off with, and, and that's probably going to be a big deal because if you put three four by eight tents in there, you can veg four plants. It would be a difficult thing. You'd have to veg them big. But you would take, you would veg, you would have to veg six plants and put three in each tent because you have a 12, you said 12 plant count limit, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you have 12 plants, you're going to have a very long veg. And I suspect that you're going to be into this for three, four by eight. I, I don't see how you would take advantage of this space any other way. And you can build stuff. I mean, you could build three spaces for it. But if you don't have a veg and you try to do this on table, and if you do this with hydro, then you are now three steps away from being successful as far as I can tell. Because if you look at that picture that I post up quite frequently, I show you what 15 plants under two lights looks like. And that's 15 plants under two lights with a four-week veg. If you have a longer veg, you would have fewer plants. So you would have to have – you would be heading toward those three large plants under two lights. That would be your veg. And then, well, you'd have six plants in veg, and then you would move three into each tent. And tents, i, I got to tell you, with your ceiling, like you are coming right up against the height of a tent. And a tent – or your room does not allow for very big plants. It allows for wide plants. So you might end up with like one tent in veg and then three lights in flower, maybe, like a thousand watt on a mover in veg 
and maybe 3,000 watts just hanging from the ceiling because you can't put tents in there. Um, you're going to, either way, you're going to have to put an AC in that window or you're going to have to run a dual duct either way. But if you buy a dual duct portable unit, those things are $500, and I don't think it's going to cool the amount of lights that you have. And if you put one in the window, it will probably cost you like $200 less, maybe $399, maybe $100 less. And you can literally buy a one-ton unit that looks like it'll fit in that window or something close to it that stands a chance. But I don't see, I, I don't have an answer for you um, if you're going to build your own space, unless you're going to build three, four by eight tents and you separate the room into a veg and a flower. But as soon as you try to convert this space, the cost-value relationship of how much yield you can achieve plummets. It goes down. And I don't think you're ever going to be able to get the yield that you're looking for building something and vegging and flowering in the same space. It's too many things against you. Okay. So is there um, a maximum amount of lights as far as wattage of lighting, as far as wattage per plant that I need? Like, uh, like, no, there, no, no, there, no, there, no, no. There level? Yep. No, no. You, I think you have that completely backward. I don't care how many plants you grow. You can do 98 per two plant per two lights. You can do 15 plants per two lights. You can do three plants per two lights, like in those pictures I show you. But yeah. there's a longer veg. I mean, you're going to veg for one week, four weeks, or ten weeks. And the longer the veg, the bigger the plant, the fewer you need. So when you say max light, I hear kill the plant. What, what I would prefer to hear you say is minimum light. Because if you give the plants max light, they'll do what everybody does. They'll kill them. Yeah, so is there an amount of light that I don't want to go over per plant? Yes, too much. I, mean? I don't have – it would be like asking me what RPM you should be at when driving. I don't know. Is it a four? Is it a six? Is it an eight cylinder? Do you have a turbo? Are you up a hill? Are you, are you towing something? I can't give you that. I can tell you that a 1,000-watt light should be over a 5x5 five five space, two feet deep, full of canopy. I don't care if you do that with three plants, 15 plants, or 98 plants. I don't care how many plants you have. That's irrelevant. What happens is, is if you put a 1,000-watt light over not enough plant canopy, you kill it with too much light. That's, that's the game. So it's a difficult question to ask, like buying a car and saying, hey, I got to drive home. What gear should I be in? How would the guy, there's no way for them to know that. And I don't mean that to get out of answering you. I mean to say that there's no way for no, me what, to. No, what you just said answered it. Like if I put oh, too okay. much light, it's going to kill the plant. Right. That's what I'm wondering. Right. So think of it like shifting gears. If you're at 1,000 watts in week 10, you'll be at 100 watts in week 1. And at week 5, you'll be at 500 watts. And I don't care if you do 600 watts at 5 feet or 500 watts at 4 feet. You you know what I mean? Like, it's the same thing depending on distance. And we also don't know what shape hood you have. And we, we don't know several factors. So Yeah, different I, I, lights I, require different distances and, and all that. I would stuff. say that different hood shapes, because we're yeah. asking about a 1,000-watt HID light. So I'm just assuming that you've got an Ushio bulb in a 1,000-watt ballast. Don't care, digital or magnetic ballast. What changes is the hood shape. Because if you buy a supersized hood, you're probably not going to buy a light mover, and you're probably going to do a scrog. If you buy a small hood, you're probably going to do taller plants, or you're going to put them on light movers and do a scrog. Scrogs yeah, keep the plant mean, short. Yeah. And that's why I'm telling you that you, if you can't do big plants because you have a ceiling restriction, then you're definitely not going to have a long veg. If you don't have a long veg, you're not growing big plants, and your plant count just went up. Because the shorter the veg, the more plants you need. Now, you could just do something super easy and enjoy yourself, like three 600-watt lights and 5x5 five five tents. Each light, one tent. 
You do one tenth for veg, and you do two tenths for flour. So I want twice as much space for the flowering? Plants get twice as big, so you definitely want yep. twice as much space, yes. Okay. Now, if you wanted a little more, you would step it up to three four by eights with two six hundreds or one one thousand on a light mover in each. But you're really not limited by the space at this point because you're limited by ceiling height and plant count. Those are the two restrictions in your world. If you had two more feet, you'd knock it out of the park. You could veg them big. You could veg them for eight weeks and grow them five feet tall. But you don't have the height. And when you don't have the height, you have to increase plant count. And when you increase plant count, I've already now on the literally your second concern, I've railroaded it. Because if you've got 12 plants, that's six in veg and three in each of the two flower areas, or six in veg and six in flower, depending if you do a two or three light rotation. <laughs> but that's only if you've separated veg from flower. Because if you don't separate veg from flower and you do them all in the same room, well, if you have a four-week veg, it's going to take you 12 weeks to finish. And if you have a six-week veg, it's going to take you 14 weeks to finish. And if you have an eight-week veg, it'll take you two months to veg and two months to flower. So you'll have a 16-week harvest. So it's, it's a big consideration on whether you switch from one to the other. So in your case, because of your ceiling height and all this restriction, in, in, in my view, I, I see one 600-watt veg and two 600-watt flowers. You could do more, but if you do three tents with 1,600 watts, I suspect in Michigan you could probably not even buy an AC during winter. Just open that window. Okay. So three four-by-eight tents would be the way to go. Three four by eights would be max, but okay. you're pushing plant size because remember you're going to have six plants in veg, which means you're going to have three in each flower tent for a total of twelve plants. That's okay. That's a big plant to do in veg. I mean, if you've got three plants vegging, well, six vegging, but there's an alternate schedule, so they're six or eight weeks apart. So when you're finishing three in veg, you'll be finishing three plants five feet tall. Then when you go into flower, you're going to take those three plants, move them into one tent. You're going to lower them into a trellis, like you see in my trellis video. And then the other three plants that were in flower, you're going to transplant from a one-gallon bucket to a three. You're going to take cuttings off the plants that you just flowered, or the ones in veg, don't care. And you're going to take cuttings from them and, and have to start three more cuttings because every four weeks you're going to have to take cuttings, transplant from a one to a three so they can stay in veg, transplant from a three to a seven and move them into flower. When you have a three light rotation, there's no other. When it's three light, three space, two light rotation like you have. But again, you could do two six hundreds or a thousand on a light mover. In each tent. It doesn't matter to me. Same thing. What's nice about the three 600s is you'll only have two lights on at a time, 100 watts. You could probably cool them with the window open. If you do 3,000s, then you're going to have 2,000 watts on. You have to check the circuit at that point because you may have to consider adding, you know, bringing an electrical cord from another room or running a box. And if you're trying not to change the house, Three six hundred is the answer because if you have a twenty amp circuit, you can't do two thousand, and if you have twenty five amp circuit, two thousand watts. That's coming up on eighty percent, one hundred percent duty cycle. The wires could get hot, and if you add a fan or ace or any fans, and you add another two or three hundred watts worth of fans, then suddenly you're at twenty five hundred watts. And 2,500 watts makes a 100% duty cycle. And I never suggest using electricity at a 100% rate. Burn everything down. Okay. So, three 600s. And now that you see that you're in three 600s, and when we go back to the original equipment list, um, you might 
do the CO2 tanks, you're definitely not going to do a drip system. You might do the AC. You're definitely not going to do two solo revolution light movers. You're definitely not going to need four three-by-six cables. And you're definitely not going to be building a shelter for them. And you're at a pound a month, just so just so you have a little bit of something to be excited about. You're at a pound a month. <laughs> okay. So what do you think the the maximum per plant I'll get with that setup? Doesn't well, matter. if you do one plant, just, you'll get a pound. If you do two pounds, two plants, you'll get a half pound each. If you do three plants, you get a third pound location. each. Yeah. No, you get no, you get a pound from just a how many watt light. Yeah. You get a pound okay. from a six hundred watt light on average if you do a good job. Don't care what nutrients you use. Don't care. If you add a light mover, you'll get 25%. If you add CO2, you'll get 25% more. And since a 600 watt really only requires a 4 by 4 tent, if you buy a 5 by 5 tent, you'll have enough room to add CO2. But remember, if you expect 25% more, either you have to add a plant or you have to veg them 25% bigger. So consider that because you can't put 25% more weight on the same plant. You physically have to grow them larger because if a plant can only produce X and you expect 1.25 X, then you have to grow 1.25 X plant. So yes. you'll have to grow them a little bigger. But that's fine because you have your own veg space. You can grow them as big as you want. All right. Okay. So we have... We have we have about eight ten minutes left on this half hour consult, yep. so let's focus on what I can do to better help you target, or if you disagree with me, what I can do to help you clear up the difference between what you're feeling and what I'm thinking. I'm just debating whether I want to. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy for you because you got the information. I know, you shattered, shattered all my hopes and dreams. I know. I'm just I know. And I look but, uh, at this picture, and I see that blank piece of paper in the middle of the room. And then I think, I look at the equipment around the edge, and I'm like, uh-oh, here's a guy who's planning something. <laughs> but I, I'm super glad you're receptive, at least, to the information. And you can see a little bit of the window that you have three four by eights or three five by fives. And you could do you could section off one part of the room so it's five deep, put a door in it, and you could put two six hundreds or two thousands in there and veg with a thousand, but then you go back to the electrical thing. So you you have a couple of options. Yes, sir. Hmm. I mean wiring more circuits and stuff like that can be done if I if I need to. But uh you could also just run one extension cord like an AWG twelve from another room and you can light up one light with that and you you know what I mean? And now you've taken six hundred watts out of the circuit. So if you find a different circuit, you can run one extension cord. But if you go up to thousands, you're gonna you're just gonna just run a box. Just get the wire. So let me ask yeah, you this, and yeah. it's a brutal question, and I just want an honest answer. Do you know how to grow? I've never grown before. Nope. I've just Do done studying. Do yourself. Okay. 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 <clears throat> let me put this in a different perspective for you. Get yourself, you have a choice if you want to learn how to grow. If you'd like to learn how to grow, get three lights and three tents and a smaller system. For instance, if you just want to learn how to grow, you could do that thing in my videos with three two by four by five tents and three four foot eight bulb T five from Nickel City. Or you could buy three five by five tents because they're only like fifteen bucks more than a four by four, otherwise it doesn't matter. And you could put three twelve bulbs or three sixteen bulbs in them. Far less heat, way more appropriate, and much easier. You're just growing buckets. It's much more appropriate for your plant count and skill level. And I know 1,000-watt setups cost the same as 600-watt. And you could buy 3,000s and dim them and never do, you know, never turn them up. 
You can buy three six hundreds and three five by fives. You can buy three four hundreds and three four by fours. You can buy three four foot eight bulb T fives and little two by four tents and put them on the floor. Because frankly, if you want to learn how to do this, the most appropriate way for you is a three light rotation. Because it takes six harvests to get good. You kill the first one, you see the second one, you learn how to super crop the third one. Then you practice three more times. Now, if you only have one light where you veg and flower in the same space, it takes three months to harvest, so it's going to take you a year and a half to learn how to grow. If you have two lights, you'll get a harvest every 60 days, so it'll take you a year to grow. But so more, you, more, more practice when, when, I, when I'm doing the more rotations that I have. Yeah, yeah, and you can do it with three 400s or three 600s. It really, for me, the only thing that changes is yield. For instance, you buy three 400-watt, four-foot, eight-volt T5s, three little tents. You get a half a pound a month. And if you do the math, three 400s is 1,200 watts. And I tell you, you get a pound and a half from a 1,000, and a 1,000, that would be every 90 days. A pound and a half from a 1,000 is a half pound a month from a 400. So I don't care if you have three 400-watt lights or one 1,000. Get the same friggin' yield. And the experience happens three times faster. And the reality is you can't tell a 400-watt P5 bud from an LED bud from a 1,000-watt HID bud. The only thing that changes is yield, not the quality, because quality is based on grower talent. And if you don't know how to grow, quality is the last thing that you have to worry about because you're going to kill them on the first round. You'll watch them grow on the second round. And by the third round, you'll understand how to do this. And for you, that'll be like three, four months with a three-light rotation. Now, does the broadness of the spectrum affect the quality of the, of the plant? Have you ever looked at a bud and said, are you a smoker? Do you smoke pot? No, I don't even smoke. Okay. None of it matters. It's all a lie. The spectrum doesn't matter. The nutrients don't matter. pH lockout is a lie. And anybody that tells you they want quality instead of yield is failing. Because the guys that grow and grow well know that you don't get quality without yield. And you don't get yield without quality. It would be like driving in the fast lane in second gear and wondering why you don't get the mileage from manufacturer property. It's because you don't know how to use it properly. So you have a long way to go because until you get the same weight three times in a row, how would you even know if switching nutrients matter? Because yield is based on light. So who cares about the nutrients? So if you got a half pound from your 400-watt light three times in a row, if you switch nutrients, only then would I believe that you understood that nutrients that nutrients are relative. Because if you get a half pound and you add an ounce because you switch to another different nutrient, there's so many. I mean, if you switch to a nutrient and you added a half ounce, spectacular. Then I would believe you. But until then, all it is is promises from the manufacturer. Because in the photosynthesis equation, there are only three factors. Using light for energy, plants convert water and CO2 into sugar and oxygen. So there are only three inputs, light, water, and CO2. And if you add more light, you kill your plants. And if you add more water, you kill your plants. So the only thing left is CO2. That's why the nutrients are irrelevant, because plants use sugar to run all their other processes. And until you're good, how would you know if the spectrum mattered, especially your first round when you're going to kill them? And in this room, you were so far away from the reality of the situation that even if you bought a spectrum that mattered, of which I know none, but even if you bought a spectrum that mattered, you would have killed it with the lights. You would have killed it by spending 10 times what you needed to. You would have killed it with your trays because your ceiling's too low. You would have killed it with the drip system because you wouldn't do hydro with your plant count. And so there would have been many, many, many ways for you to kill your shit. And that's why I tell you spectrum and yield, I mean, spectrum and nutrients don't matter. Worthless. Worthless. You could grow with T5s, and you'd never know the difference. Now that was a fast half hour. And if you've been listening to this series, you'll notice that this call ended like all the others. The information that you have is so far apart from the reality of the grow. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Because the guys that are good 
aren't posting on the net. They're doing their thing. They might make some videos, but the guys that are good are not posting on the net. And if I'm telling you that 99% of people that start growing cannabis fail at growing cannabis, then it's probably going to be pretty hard for you to get good information. Okay, I'm the Grow Boss, and if you have any questions about your garden, I'm always available to you, and if you're looking to have one of these videos so you can visualize what you're gonna do in your garden, hey, when you set the appointment, we'll see if we can do that for you too. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for listening.